again by the Hibbing Blue Jackets. They beat International Falls in a tight-checking defensive affair here. The final score, two to nothing. Right now, I'm with head coach Bill Olson and his assistant Bill Teacher. And Bill, first of all, did you uh, really expect this low scoring of an affair? Yes, we did. We uh, kind of watched the media and, and uh, got whatever scouting report we could from anybody and uh, kind of gave us a basic outline to uh, work for a defensive game. And uh, I have to give Falls a lot of credit. They played with a lot of heart. They're a beautiful team, and it's too bad that the state couldn't see both teams down. Bill, I know that uh, the coaching duties is a real uh, team effort, and uh, what about the preparation down the stretch here? Well, we only had really one day to prepare for the Falls, and uh, we got what we could out of the media. We drew on what our two games were against them, and uh, the three coaches, Mike Terrell included, uh, we put together what we thought they were going to do, and we knew that if they didn't score, we couldn't get beat. So that's the kind of game plan we really went in with. Bill, you're going to be making a return trip now to the state tournament. You've been there before. You know what it takes. Uh, your thoughts going in and uh, your team's chances. Well, it's altogether a, a new season for us. We've got to, we kind of take them like stepping stones. Uh, we got through the regional, and now I feel that we have as good a chance as anybody uh, in the state. Uh, there are a lot of good teams, of course, and you get in the tournament, it takes a little bit of luck to take a lot of prayers, I guess. Okay, the best of luck to both of you gentlemen. Congratulations on a fine victory tonight. Thank you very much. Well, once again, Eric, the final score, two to nothing. Hibbing beats International Falls. They are state tournament bound. Live from the Hibbing Memorial Arena, this is Steve LePage. Falls has met hundreds of times on the hockey rink, and usually the games are real nail biters. They met again tonight in Hibbing for a trip to the state tournament. Hibbing won the thing, two nothing. KDLH Sports Director Marsh Nelson phoned in this report. The Hibbing Blue Jackets are the 1985 Section 7 hockey champions. A very thrilling 2 0 victory over International Falls before a standing room only crowd at the Hibbing Memorial Building. The Blue Jackets got the only goal they would need at the 10 11 mark of the first period when they held a puck in at the left point and Tom Hansen whistled a low shot to the far corner. Hansen getting the goal. Nikoloff and uh, Doug Terrell got assists and it was one to nothing hibbing at the end of one period. There was no scoring in the second period, and the third period was an up and down contest also. Hibbing put it out of reach, a power play goal at 12-10 of the period when Mike Grillo scored from John Hagen. In the first period, uh, Couture of International Falls had five saves. He had five in the second. He had 12 in the third as Hibbing put the pressure on and a game total of 22. Hyduke in the goal for Hibbing at six in the first, five in the second, and four in the third, a game total of 15. This is very likely Larry Ross's final high school hockey game as the great coach at International Falls. He is retiring at the close of this season, and tonight, Hibbing ended the season for International Falls. Final score was the Hibbing Blue Jackets. Championship was decided last night in Hibbing in front of a standing room only crowd. The fans got what they came to see as the Hibbing Blue Jackets and the International Falls Broncos went at it from the start. And according to Hibbing senior Pat Meralt, the Broncos gave Hibbing everything they could handle. Yeah, definitely. They came out forechecking. They, they bottled us up. They had uh, that first line really forechecked well against us and bottled us up. We couldn't get the puck out of the zone that much. We were kind of shaking with the puck. And but it just so happens we got we got two lucky breaks and we, the puck went in and that's what won it for us. The two hibbing breaks came in the first and third period. At the 10-11 mark of the first period, Tom Hansen's wrist shot somehow found the net through the traffic in the slot, and Hibbing led it one to nothing. That was all the Blue Jackets would need as goaltender John Hyduk shut out the International Falls Broncos the rest of the way. Hibbing made that one goal lead stand up until just over three minutes to go in the hockey game. Mike Grillo scored a power play goal. That was enough to put away the Broncos and end the illustrious coaching career of Larry Ross. Grillo got the goal on the power play as he was able to pick up a rebound right in front of the Broncos net and give the Jackets their third trip to the state tournament in the last four years. Well, they're an experienced team. Uh, they've had 14 seniors. They skated with a lot of heart and a lot of emotion. Uh, we both had a lot at stake the state tournament, and uh, they're a beautiful team. My heart goes out to them. Uh, they played good hockey, and I give uh, the Falls team a lot, a lot of credit. At the same time, I have to give our kids a lot of credit because they, 20 guys bonded together and uh, came out two to nothing. And I'm just so happy for all the boys that they, they can uh, go through this. 
Hajduk, who didn't face a lot of shots last night, recorded his third straight shutout after being slowed by a knee injury earlier this year. This time, though, going to state, he says, will be sweeter because this is his last time. It's really tough. You know, they're both teams, and I was both a part of them. And, I, you know, I really don't want to tell or say which one is better. All I can say is, you know, we have more seniors this year, and as far as I'm being a senior, it's going to be a lot more special going down the state tournament. Hibbing will meet the winner of Section 3 in the state tournament on Thursday. Meanwhile, in with... Last night at Hibbing's jammed Memorial Building, the hometown Blue Jackets turned back International Falls 2-0 to win the Section 7 title. They'd get the only goal they would need at 10-10 of the first period on a shot screened very well from the left point by Tom Hansen, who took a pass from partner Bo Nikoloff. Our center, Pat Merolti, uh, won the draw, came back, and uh, we, we try to practice that where we hit the defense on their side if the wings don't come out, so I just gave it to Tom, and he made a heck of a shot for the corner there. Hibbing picked up the insurance goal on a power play at 12-10 of the third period when Mike Grillo flipped in a rebound. Senior John Hajduk got the shutout in goal with 15 saves. Oh, it's wonderful. You know, last year we won it, but this year is a lot more sweet since uh, I'm a senior, and, you know, this team's really stuck together well. How about uh, your toughest save of the game? Can you think of one? Oh, it probably had to be the one early in the first period where a guy was right in a slot and I came out and challenged him. That was probably the toughest. While it was gratification for the winning coach, uh, Billy Olson, for Larry Ross of the International Falls Broncos, a gallant try in this his final year of high school coaching. That's the thing that you miss. Uh, the kids are, you know, especially this age group. Uh, other people have different preference and different age groups. This is the age group that I like, and I think that they're a very, you know, they're a very pleasurable group to be with, and they're just precious to, to me. They're just, it's a precious age group where they need, you know, they, they enjoy your your guidance, and, and, and they show a great deal of respect, and, you know, you're their coach, and, and I... I'm very proud of that, and I'm very proud of uh, the Number two, advanced to the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament, which begins on Thursday after last night's 2-0 shutout victory over the International Falls Broncos in front of a sellout arena in Hibbing last night. Hibbing will now advance to the March Classic at the St. Paul Civic Center for the third time in four years. The Hibbing Blue Jackets have now posted a record of 20 wins, two losses, and one tie for the season. Hibbing is the first team to qualify. Many of the other teams will be determined this weekend. Hibbing head coach Bill Olson said this year's road to the state was tough because of the ranking Hibbing had early in the season. Very definite. Uh, you know, subconsciously, uh, it's in a human being to go for the underdog and of course we're we weren't the underdog we were rated number one for a long time and now number two and uh, and that's the way it is uh, people you know just do it out of habit I do it myself and I watch games on TV I just hope that somebody can can come through and our kids were very patient and had to endure a, a lot of things but it made them uh, better people because of it Hibbing got all the offense they needed in the first period when Tom Hansen's wrist shot somehow found the net through the traffic in the slot and Hibbing had a one to nothing lead at the 10-11 mark of the first period. For Hansen, it was his seventh goal of the year and that was all the offense the Jackets needed as John Hyduke shut the door on the Broncos the entire 45 minutes. Hibbing senior center Pat Merault called last night's hockey game the toughest one of the year for the Blue Jackets. Yeah, definitely. They came out forechecking. They, they bottled us up. They had uh, that first line really forechecked well against us and bottled us up. We couldn't get the puck out of the zone that much. We were kind of shaking with the puck. And But it just so happens we got, we got two lucky breaks and the puck went in and that's what won it for us. That one goal would hold up the rest of the way, but Hibbing added an insurance goal late in the third period on a power play. And on the year so far, Hibbing has scored on 26 of 71 opportunities for 36%, and they have not been scored upon while they had the power play. On this opportunity, it would be Mike Grillo getting the rebound and putting it home as the Blue Jackets went on to win it 2 to nothing. That goal all but eliminated Falls' chances of rallying in the hockey game. It also took the pressure off Hibbing goaltender John Haidu, as he had more room to work with, although he didn't eat it, as he recorded his third straight shutout. 
Hajduk, who was slowed with a knee injury earlier in the year, was relieved when he saw Grillo find the mark at the other end of the building. Uh, they're, all, they're all good. <laughs> you know, third period, you know, butterflies were, you know, coming out. And at the end of the game, it just seemed like everything just, you know, drained right out of my feet, and it's such a good feeling. The loss for International Falls ended an era of Bronco hockey as Larry Ross has now retired. Last night was his final game as head coach of the Broncos, and he ends becoming the nation's winningest all-time high school hockey coach. His teams have won six state titles, his last state championship coming in the mid-70s. But Ross, when he looks back, says the teams in the 60s were his best. Well, those mid, uh, a long time ago, you know, all those middle 60 teams were really highly motivated kids and kids that were 100% devoted to hockey and their priorities were 100% to hockey and and consequently they did well and I'll always cherish uh, those kids in those mid 60s because uh, hockey was their life and so uh, being their hockey coach I was I was kind of in favor of that and nowadays you know the kids have so many options and so many choices to do a lot of several things but those kids in those days uh, you know, Jim, they just played hockey. They played hockey from, you know, the 1st of November to the 1st of March. That's all they did is play hockey. So uh, I, uh, I approved of that. And, uh, and I, cherish, I cherish those moments, and nobody will be ever be able to take them away from me because it was a special group of people, and, and it was a special community, and, and uh, they were great moments in my life. For Hibbing, this will be their second straight state tournament appearance. Last year, they won their first round game before being knocked out in the semifinals. This time around, however, the Blue Jackets feel they have an even better squad. And they feel that they're going down there this time around to take it home. Assistant head coach Bill Teacher feels this year's team has more balance than last season. Uh, I think we've got uh, three solid lines, or four solid lines, instead of two solid lines that we had last year and, and a so-so third and a tailed off to a very mediocre uh, fourth line. So we're, we're just much more solid. We've got six defensemen that are very solid and uh, our goaltenders both have another year experience. So we're just a better team all the way through. With a dozen seniors on this year's squad, the team feels that they will have more experience and be more prepared when they venture into the state tournament and the St. Paul Civic Center on Thursday afternoon. Yeah, I think we got a lot of experience now. That should help us, I think. Um, other than that, pretty much everything's the same, I guess. Well, to be honest, I thought about it. I thought, you know, last year we were just happy to make it. This year, we want it all. You know, we went through it all last year, the, the crowd and all that. And I think every, we have 12 seniors who played there and a few for, juniors. And I think this year we want it more so than last year. I have a deep down feeling that it's going to be a year for the Jackets this year. Hibbing will play its first quarterfinal game Thursday.